Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Welcome to Mr. Wall's World History. Today we're going to learn about Egypt. I'm going to tell you a story about Egyptian gods. It's going to be great. Stick around. Today I'm going to tell you a story about ancient Egyptian gods. The great thing about this story is that it's very similar to a Disney movie. The Disney movie it's similar to is The Lion King. Have you heard of it? The story is going to involve four main characters. Okay, the four characters are Osiris, Isis, Seth, and Horus. Now these characters are very similar to characters in Disney. I'm going to briefly explain each character before we get going. So let's start with Osiris. He is like the old father figure of Egypt. When you think of Osiris, think of Mufasa. He's the father figure, but his time is coming to an end. Up next we've got Seth. When you think of Seth, think of Scar from The Lion King. Seth is evil and he's powerful. Okay, he represents kind of the evil possibility in society. One more thing to remember about Seth is that he is the brother of Osiris, similarly to how Scar was the brother of Mufasa. Next up we have Isis. She is the queen of the underworld. What does that mean? It means she kind of represents chaos. So she is the wife of Osiris. Osiris and Isis, they balance each other out. Osiris is order, Isis is chaos. Together, they create a balance. Seth, who is like Scar, is trying to disrupt that balance, but we'll get into that later when we talk about the story. Horus, I'm gonna introduce a little bit later. So let's get started with the story. So we have Osiris, the king of everything in Egypt, and he gets a little bit cocky, he gets kind of too confident, really. He underestimates Seth's evilness and his power, and then they have a battle. When Seth feels like he has the right opportunity, he attacks. During the battle, Seth chops Osiris up into many pieces, and he spreads the pieces of Osiris all over. But Seth couldn't actually kill Osiris because he's a god. Similar to how in The Lion King, Scar couldn't actually kill Mufasa forever. His spirit came back and gave advice to Simba. So Seth overthrew Osiris and Seth became the ruler of all of Egypt. Similarly to how in The Lion King, when Scar killed Mufasa and became the ruler of all of Pride Rock. Seth has disrupted the balance between order and chaos. Osiris represented order, and because he's dead, now chaos comes into the picture. And who is the goddess of chaos? That's right, Isis. Isis is sad. Her husband is dead. So what does she do now? She looks throughout the empire and finds Osiris' DNA. With that DNA, she impregnates herself and has a baby. That baby's name? Horus. The Lion King version of Horus is Simba. He is the son of Osiris and Isis. A little side note, there's a lot of similarities in history between Horus and Jesus. This is Isis and Horus. Here's a photo of Mary and Jesus. They look pretty similar, right? That's because Jewish people lived in ancient Egypt. Christians got a lot of their ideas from Jewish people. Anyways, I thought that was cool. Let's get back to the story. So Horus, the son of Isis and Osiris, grows up outside of Egypt. Very similarly to how Simba grew up outside of Pride Rock. And now when Horus realizes he's old enough, strong enough, wise enough, he goes back and he fights Seth. Now we have this great battle. Seth representing evil. Horus, the young son of the great father Osiris, they have a battle and Horus comes out victorious. So Horus wins. He defeats Seth and he loses one eye in the process. 
So what happens with Seth? He gets pushed out of Egypt, but he doesn't die because you can never kill the idea of evil. Now, it's similar to the... <sighs> yes, Charles. What happens next? Okay, Charles, just follow along and listen carefully. What does Horus do as the ruler of Egypt? Does he relax, take a vacation? No, he goes back to the underworld, finds the spirit of Osiris, gives Osiris the eye that he lost in the fight with Seth. Stay with me now. And together, Osiris and Horus rule Egypt. Horus representing the vision, Osiris representing the culture, together make a perfect pharaoh. This story represents the perfect attributes that the Egyptians thought would be necessary to lead. You need two things. You need to respect the traditions while also having a vision for the future. And you need to pay attention to the evil things that may get in your way. My question to you is, what are the things in your life that are keeping you from being that perfect Pharaoh that you want to be? It's one thing to recognize the evils, it's another thing to try and avoid them. Thanks for watching. Shout out to my producer, script writer, advice giver, workout partner, friend, Jason DeRoos. Check out his Twitch, Instagram, and email here. See you next time.